like it's like you're about to like throw up all over the place, but like also have an orgasm at the same time. Like it's amazing. First, it is a sport for people who don't like sports. You're not about football. You're not about baseball. Uh, you really don't like wrestling because it's become too campy. This is for you. insanely family friendly, except for the uh, the occasional curse words. Uh, it's it's just a great time. I mean, I love my, I enjoy it. Uh, you know, it's not my wife's favorite thing, but you know, she likes it. That the you know my daughters, I have three little girls, and they love it. And, um, and you know, so it's sort of for, for us. It's become that's kind of our family thing. You know, we're all involved in our little way. The thing, it's got all the spectacle and the pageantry that you you get with wrestling, but the hardcore intensity that you get with uh, traditional sports. Moreover than that, it's not guys, it's uh, it's women. And to see ladies competing at this level at a, you know, at a very dangerous sport, I mean, they get to where they're going anywhere from uh, 25 to 35, sometimes 40 miles an hour. Now, if that's a car that hits you like that, you're going to the hospital. So, coming at it that way, coming with your mind wide open. Don't think of this like baseball. The first couple of times you come, forget about the trying to keep score. It's not going to happen. Basically, it breaks down like this: you got two teams with five players each, so there's a total of ten young ladies on the ring or on the track at any given time. Uh, you're going to see uh, two of the ladies are going to have a panty on their head, a little stocking with a star, and two others are going to have a stripe. Now, the ones with the star, those are your jammers. Those are the folks who can actually score points. Uh, the pivots, the ones with the stripes, they can take the jammer panty in the middle of the jam and start scoring points. So for a jammer, the first jammer to get out of the pack, which com is composed of the four blockers from each team, first jammer to get through has what it call is called lead status. You're the lead jammer. Yeah, the referee is pointing at, at, that, at that jammer, and her superpower is she can end the jam, which is two minutes long, before the two minutes are up. Okay, now what that does is that it prevents the other team from being able to score points. So what you get into there is that it can become a very strategic game, uh, as well as a game of just sheer force of will between two teams. Now, I just threw a lot of words at you. Jam, preserves, what's he talking about? I don't know. The jam is when the whistle blows and they are skating for points. That's called a jam. Points are scored by the first jammer who's able to get out in front of the pack and then come around the track. And for every opposing player that she uh, she laps, she gets a point. Everyone else are blockers. Their goal is to keep the other team's jammer from passing them by hitting them, by getting in front of them, by sending them out of bounds. Bows are awesome. <laughs> So, my name is Jessica. Okay. My derby name is Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. And I got my derby name from my derby mama, Naughty Seacups. Um, she asked me one day when I was getting ready to actually roster for a game what I was interested in. And I gave her a list of 10 things I was interested in. And one of those things was poetry. And another one of those things was William Shakespeare. Okay. So, she combined the two and she said, What about William Shakespeare? and it just kind of stuck, and people just call me Shakes. Your nom de plume is uh, Wes Wittenmeyer, but uh, some people call me George West. Others know me as Dr. W, indeed. Dr. Prescription and pounding. Uh, where did you get that roller derby name? Uh, that was uh, Wilma Shakespeare came up with that one. Uh, she wanted me to go with Mike Daddy, which my wife wasn't having, but like, wasn't having to do with that. So we, uh, we kind of settled on the Dr. W thing because of a nod to my, my deceased father. My name is Marie Carrier, a.k.a. Ivana Pachaka. Leah Barzanti, a.k.a. Blink-182. Blink-182, what else? What is that? Um, so basically when I joined my Facebook game, it's actually to hide from my graduate school program or like all my other jobs. Um, and I, I like alliteration, so it's Pachanga Beef, and then nobody can get away from that. So it just became Pachanga. Pachanga, Pachanga means party, um, which anybody outside of Miami doesn't know. So, and it became Iwana Pachanga, so Ivana Pachanga. What are some of the stereotypes or stigmas that you face from peers and others involved in roller derby? So the very, the very first thing I get, oh, you guys just like throw elbows and hit each other. And of course, the contact sport, so yeah, there's, 
there's definitely that, but can't throw elbows, like that's completely legal in the sport of roller derby. Right. And we're not trying to viciously take each other down, we are playing a competitive sport, and it is contact, but it's not, it's not vicious. So you're not trying to take anyone down, you're just trying we're to, trying to hurt nobody, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to positionally, you know, block them, we're trying to strategically win the game. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot more strategy, I think, that people think. It's not just hitting each other on stations. And how long have you been part of the uh, team? I've been playing for about four years. And when did you become a uh, freshman? Like when did you actually I started play? in May of 2013 and I joined because I was out of a long term relationship and I had a bunch of extra time on my hands right. and I, my confidence was low, my self esteem was low and I needed something to kind of throw myself into and uh, I always say it found me, I didn't find Derby. I went to a local skate shop because I wanted to skate on the beach on the weekend with a friend and they happened to be a sponsor of the league and they had a flyer for their open house which just happened to be the very next day. So I came to the open house and I saw one of our skaters, Tally Gator, do like a turnaround stop on her skates and I thought it was the coolest thing in the world and I knew that the, the vibe that I had from the women that were there was relaxed and casual and it was super genuine and I knew that I could totally get into it. About three years now, I've been involved with 24-7 uh, Miami.tv, and uh, I had my own show. Uh, it was a political talk show, and uh, I was supposed to do a show about the, the modern look of feminism. What does that look like in the new millennium? And uh, my guest bailed on me, so I go to the producer, um, William, uh, Louis Chacon, and he said, well, you should get the Derby Girls. Okay, you need to give him a call. So uh, last minute sort of thing, they came in and filled in and uh, after five minutes of speaking with them live on the air, I was fascinated. I mean, just, you know, here you've got uh, women from all different kinds of walks of life that uh, basically this common kind of goal and this is spirit decor that I had not seen since my days in the Navy. I mean, really, you know, a tight knit group of, of folks. There isn't that much competition within the team, which is refreshing because sometimes, you know, you have older people part that are part of a sport that tend to be better and people focus on that. Here, those people are mentoring all of the new skaters, all of the fresh meat. How much time would you say you spend for Jewelry Baby? A lot. <laughs> I spend a lot of my free time, not just uh, the practice time, we practice three times a week, about two and a half hours of skating, uh, but I also help coach the fresh meat, and um, that's about two, hour, two and a half hours as well. Uh, I never thought I could do what I do on skates, and to see now the younger skaters look up to me, you know, and I'm like, I was there three, four years ago, like I was there learning and falling and not knowing what I'm doing not that long ago. In addition to the skating, there's also running the nonprofit side of the business, uh, which I'm on the board. I help out and I'm the chair of the marketing uh, committee. And there's a lot of moving parts that come to putting together our home season and running a business, which is a non it's a nonprofit, but it's still running a business. Can you tell me a bit more about that? That's actually really interesting. Um, yeah, so we have a we have a like the structure. We have a board. Uh, you know. President, Vice President, Secretary, Treasurer, okay. who runs obviously, who's legally responsible for the nonprofit, right. uh, and kind of dictates the, the goals for the organization. And we have committees from marketing to art to merchandise uh, to events that are very active. Um, there's there's a few other other committees, and they help operate the website. They help raise awareness about the sport of roller derby. Um, they also help put on some events or partner with other uh, people. They help uh, we get sponsorships. Uh, through a sponsorship committee. So there's just a lot of, uh, it's all volunteer. It's all extra time that, uh, in addition to our day job that we put in, in addition to our skating time that we put in, that we help run the run. Um, do you have any involvement with the, uh, the nonprofit side? Actually, no. I um, mean, you know, I've done everything that I can to help them, but I make it a point to, this is, this is not about me, this is not about what I can bring, this is about what those ladies can do. And this is their thing. And they're very fiercely proud about how they own that. So I make it a point that, you know, I don't go to uh, meetings or anything like that. I try not to go to practices. I go and I do the, the games, you know, I, I, and that's it. I, I keep it at a very, you know, kind of a, although I'm friends with a lot of the skaters, uh, 
at the same time, you know, I keep, I try to keep it very professional because you know they're, they're for them, they would like this to be picked up and, and taken as a, a serious sport. Now, if I go and act like uh, you know a, a professional wrestling announcer, it's you know where somebody's waiting for me to puke out, look at that's not going to bring credibility to it. Now, do I tell jokes? Yes. Uh, am I trying to be entertaining? Absolutely, I am. But what I'm not trying to do is I'm not talking about, oh, you know, she's uh, wearing a fishnet or I'm telling off-color humor that's uh, misogynistic or anything like that. So it's very cool. It's very punk rock. Everybody has a ball. Uh, what would you say drives your passion for eating? Just I really love eating. I, I also like being able to hit people. Like, that's really fun after, like, a long day. But, um... That's not why I practice every day. I, I love I love skating and like really other forms of exercise kind of bump me out. <laughs> so this is good. Um, my reason is, is really my community, like the community that I join. Um, so I, I too like love being athletic and stuff like that and I hate like structured forms of uh, physical activity. And so they both kind of play in tandem, like days that I'm like, oh, I really don't want to be physically active. My community makes me do it. Or like days that I fucking hate everybody on the track. I'm like, oh, I gotta get a good workout. So this is something that you see yourself following for a long time. I hope so. I hope so. I mean, at this point, you know, I should be having a midlife crisis. I'm 44 years old. Let me tell you this, punk rock will never die. However, it will go gray, it will get bald, and it will get fat. Okay, case in point. Uh, so, for me, this is kind of uh, being a family man at this point. You know, I've got you know, got to do the day job, got to be a business owner and all that, and you know, you know, so I've got to be that guy. This is my kind of link back to the 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 salad days of, of being you know anti authoritarian and all that kind of stuff. I, I still have my link to it. So once a month, I get to go out and, and be a geriatric punk rock guy. It's it's fun. The first year and a half that I lived here, I kind of didn't have like a thing. I, I didn't really like Miami. I don't know. I guess I was homesick. But um, this has this has kind of gotten me out of that. It's given me a group of people and and something to do that I that I really love and this connected to everything I love.